I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but something's happening on Wednesday night. So in this video, I'm going to give you my two penneth to get you in the mood for Wednesday evening. If you're a Villa fan, you may want to look away now, as it might not make easy viewing. Before we start, don't forget to like the video, helps the channel, and who doesn't want to see more stuff about the blades on the net? Please join me in my live stream on Wednesday night and join in on the live chat where you can post your comments on the game as it progresses. Do not worry, I won't be yapping all through the game. I'll be too busy watching it. But it'd be great to have a bit of company and read a few of your comments as the game progresses. The first time we ever played Aston Villa was way back in 1893. We won 3-0. And guess what? We might win 3-0 again. Through the years, Villa have had the upper hand, but let's face it, that's in the past. Who even cares about the results from the four Premiership games from the 90s? Who cares that Villa are the fifth most successful club in English football history? It's what's happening right now that counts. Well, tell me one person that would choose this man over our war hero, Chris Wilder. He looks just so sad and lonely and lost. And that's despite spending a hundred million this year on new players. New players such as the £22 million Brazilian Wesley. I'm guessing Villa were hoping for a few more than five goals this season from their talisman striker. Let's face it, Flex knocked home five goals and he's not even a striker. If Wesley never moved to Villa, he would currently be celebrating being champions of Belgium. And he would have been playing Champions League again next season. Instead, he's going to be getting his ankles rackled by teams like Rotherham United in the Championship. Another £20 million plus signing for Villa this season was Tyrone Mings. This is not a political statement in any way, but I'm sure Sheffield United will take great pleasure in silencing this 27-year-old defender. I'm just going to mention one other Villa name, and that's midfielder Jack Grealish. He first signed for Villa at age six, and if anyone's got claret blood running through them, it's this guy. The thing I want to point out, though, is if this guy has got serious football ambition, will he really want to be playing championship football again next season? There's already loads of info out there on clubs like Manchester United wanting to sign the 24-year-old. If Villa stay up, they, of course, won't sell him. He's under contract till 2023, and he'll be stuck. If they go down... His personal career will actually go up. And there's no doubt one of the bigger clubs will fork out the fee to see him move. He's currently club captain and in my opinion the best player. I just wanted to mention another recent distraction he's had at the moment. I know you know the story but I'll show you this 20 seconds anyway. Hi everybody. Um, I just want to do a quick video message just to say how deeply embarrassed I am by about what has happened this weekend. Um, I know it's a tough time for everyone at the moment, been locked indoors for so long and I obviously just got a call off a friend um, asking to go around to his uh, and I stupidly agreed to do so. Um, I hope everyone can accept my apology and uh, we can move on from this and hopefully obviously in the near future we can all be out enjoying ourselves again. So to sum up Villa, they've got the centre of defence with other things on his mind. The captain and playmaker with other things on his mind. And a striker probably regretting the worst move of his career. How is this shambles of a team going to get through one of the best defensive sides of the season? Well, they aren't. In strong contrast to Villa, 
every single noise that has come out of Sheffield United throughout the lockdown period has been one of positivity, togetherness, professionalism and ambition. This first game for us Blades is a perfect start. I expect Villa to come out fighting, but within 20 minutes their heads will go down and we will control the game. So a quick reminder of the last time we played Villa and the two beautiful goals from Fleck. The team play and build up to both goals was simply sublime and beautiful to watch. I can't show you them here because Sky Sports will start to cry. But I'm sure if you're interested enough to watch this video, you'll have already watched the match highlights for yourself anyway. This is the lineup we used last time we played them in December. I think we will start with a similar lineup, but maybe McBurney and Sharp will start for us up front. The bigger discussion probably at the moment is Berg or Lunny. I really can't call this at the moment without seeing the friendly matches we've just played. From the rumours I'm hearing, I'm thinking Lunny might just start. Uh, my guess is though, whichever one starts, they won't see the full 90 minutes. So this is how I think the table will look by 8 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Beautiful. Let me know your score predictions in the comments below. I'm going for 2-0 the Blades again. I hope you join me, have a beer, share the experience of watching us move back into faith. I'll see you there.